Hello. Hi. How's everyone? How's everyone doing? Great. Come on, I need a bit more energy. Great. Good. Hi guys, my name is Afik Iskandar. Uh, I am 32 years old this year. I was born and raised in Penang. Um, I am a musician. I play guitar for a band called Ojintaku. Have you heard of Ojintaku? Who has heard of Ojintaku? Can I see a raise in hands? Wow! Wow, three people, nice. <laughs> so um, we've been uh, around since 2007, but I only joined in 2013, so I was quite late. And I'm also in another band called Berdosa. Now that band is new. So if you haven't heard of that band, it's understandable. And I'm also involved in other musical projects. Like I play guitar for other musicians. Uh, I play guitar for my girlfriend who's also a musician. And yeah. And aside from that, I am also a graphic designer. Uh, I do a lot of design work. I, I found a denim brand called Tari Jeans. Have you guys heard of Tari Jeans? Anyone here is wearing a pair of Tari jeans? Or any Tari jeans product? My God. Okay, that's a disappointment. But um, the reason why I brought these two facts about myself today is because I want to highlight about culture and how culture is very important for a person who is uh, who's involved in the creative scene, who, who, who uh, dabbles in the whole being creative, being artsy, you know? Who, who, who likes to be creative here? Who likes to draw, who likes to... There you go. So, would you agree with me that culture plays a very important part? Yes. In, in, right? Yes. In fact, I like to see culture as my canvas. You know, whenever, before I write a song, for instance, I'll think about how the song is going to impact my culture. Would the, my song or would my product take my culture to a whole new level? when I'm about to design a t-shirt for Tari Jeans, for instance. Uh, hence why, if you notice, Tari Jeans has a lot of Malaysian graphic and images because I would like to impact culture because I believe, ultimately, as a creative person, you want to create a bump on your culture. <coughs> right? Everyone's okay with me so far? Yes. Okay. So today, I want to talk about the canvas itself being our culture. There's a hole in the canvas. Okay. Um, now, being a creative person like myself, it's really hard for us to expand our creativity, to really go all out when there's a hole in the canvas. Okay. Um, and that problem, and problem that I'm going to highlight today is, in fact, about colonial consumerism. Okay. Now, okay, growing up being Malaysians, I'm sure most of us are familiar with seeing things such as images like that, where our own local magazines feature Western looking women or men. On our fashion runways, we see more Western looking or European looking individuals rather than local looking ones, right? Familiar? Yes. Okay. Shall we move on? And places named, named very western to sort of like depict luxury or, or premium, right? Names like Valencia, which are, but doesn't sound local at all. It doesn't depict what our culture is really about. Do you guys agree with me? Yes. Right? Places like that, are, you're supposed to admit luxurious and lifestyle, but it's definitely not us. And then we have uh, local brands who disguise themselves not to be Malaysians. Like brands like Bonia and British India are definitely Malaysian, but then they tend to uh, highlight slogans or taglines that are not Malaysian. For the longest time, a lot of uh, customers were confused on the origins and a lot of us were very surprised to find out that they are actually Malaysian. Bonia's uh, factory is in Cheras. Oh. <laughs> 
And okay, this is my favorite one, last but not least. Our take on Christmas and Halloween in Malaysia, it's all white. Like our Christmas is all white. We've never experienced snow at all, haven't we? Right? And then there's Halloween. That's definitely not our form of, of horror because we've been growing up with stories like uh, Pochong, Potiana, right? And then suddenly you see like a Malay boy from Ampang being all Dracula and you know, it's, it's, it's yeah, it, the laugh is, is very reasonable. So I guess it comes to a point where I would like to ask myself and everyone to ask ourselves why? Why, why are things like this happening? Why are we so flooded with Western or European or even American culture here instead of ours? Why are there no realistic representation of what we really are? Have you guys ever asked that question? Right? What's wrong with our culture? Why is it not seen as something that is marketable or commercial? Okay? So... I'm sure there are like thousands of reasons why, but the, the one of the main factors that I would like to highlight today when it comes to consumerism and um, the, the influence of consumerism, right? I'm going to take these two brands. Uh, I'm going to illustrate the power of first, okay? The power of being first with these two brands, which are Colgate and Kodak. I'm sure you guys are familiar with the brands? Yeah. Okay, they've been here in Malaysia ever since before even Merdeka, okay? Uh, so when we, we got our independence, uh, they Malaysianized, they opened like a Malaysian branch and in 1958, Colgate Palmolive Malaysia's nearby opened up as a distributing outlet and as well as Kodak. But what's interesting about these two brands is that they almost became the words for the product that they represented. You guys have heard that before, right? Like, I remember when I was growing up, uh, my folks in the kampung would refer to Face as Colgate. Even though if it's a different brand, right? And same goes with film. For the longest time, Malaysians referred film as Kodak. Right? And if you think really hard about it, those actually became words. They actually replaced our words. They had the potential to replace our actual words. That's the power of being first. Okay, are you guys following so far? Yes. Alright. Now. Uh, a lot of this being first has a lot to do with industrialization, of course. Uh, so, a lot of Western brands, a lot of uh, European brands, American brands, uh, I mean, a lot of uh, industrialization happened in the Europe, uh, in the, in the America and Europe, in the seventeen between seventeen sixty to eighteen forty. Okay, and that's when a lot of brands came out. They figured out how to manufacture things faster. They managed to export things out. Hence, why we see a lot of brands in Southeast Asia, Western brands in Southeast Asia. And now I want I want us to have a look at our industrialization which only started in 1970 so that's like 200 years apart you see hence why we are being affected so much by how things are why things are so western and European over here it's the arrivals of advertisements and they bring the products, they bring advertisements and they suggest lifestyles and slogans and also ideologies that are not necessarily similar to us, but it definitely serves better for them. It definitely serves to them, our audience, the message across. So, for the longest time, Western brands uh, uh, kept on penetrating, infiltrating our countries in a good way, but of course, at the same time, the negative impact that it brought as well is very unsafe for our culture. For instance, uh, without realizing it, Malaysians have a very westernized 
idea of beauty. Our, our, our definition of beauty is very westernized. We tend to adopt or we have adopted the uh, Renaissance and the Romantic idea or our definition of beauty. Hence why in Malaysia, a lot of us still see advertisements, uh, cosmetic brands selling beauty uh, whitening products, right? Because we all want to be white. And we also see uh, uh, good sales in uh, hair straightening products, for instance, because we don't want to have curly hair. Because we want our hair to be straight, like Kendall Jenner, like Kim Kardashian. Contact lenses, uh, contact lenses, for instance. You know, any sort of product that takes us away from our culture. And don't you guys think that's sad? Yeah. Right? And it's also, it affects a lot of us in a very negative way, especially the younger generations being represented in this way. It feels like, you know, there's something that we need to do to change, you know. Being Asian is simply uncool. Right? So, I want to ask everyone, how do we fix this? Anyone has any idea? Okay, I have no idea as well. I mean, I have no idea. I have, I don't even have the slightest idea to even start. But I guess realizing the problem will be the first step. Have I managed to make you guys realize? I'm sure you guys have realized about this long before, right? Now, how, I mean, I'm sure it's impossible to get everyone to not like Western products or to love, simply love whatever that we have already loved, right? Like, it's impossible for me to not like my favorite American band, which is Metallica, or you know, and I can't. I'm, I surely can't get you guys to do that. But I can tell you that what you guys can do now is to have a list. Okay, let's have a local list and let's have an international list. That way, we are not comparing what we have to what's already established and has all the resources to expand itself. That way, the, comp the, the comparison field becomes more fair. Don't you guys agree? So you guys can fill up the list with, for instance, your favorite band. What's your favorite local band? What's your international favorite local band? That way, you are also seen as someone who are, is very well informed about not only the European Western culture, but also your own culture. Isn't that a great thing? Besides that, you can also have like a fashion brand list. You can mix and match local and international. So my point is to say that it's not about to, to separate what you like and you don't like. It's to expand what you like more. Find more reasons to like more things. Please do not overlook what our country has to offer, offer what the locals in our country has to offer. You guys agree with me so far? Yes. So, with that, I would like to say, let's patch up the canvas. Um, let's create like a healthy environment for our canvas and also for our creatives to grow. With that, I would like to say thank you and have a pleasant day.